Welcome to Craftmas Video 2020 number one. That is a clunky title and we're gonna change it. But for now, that's what I said. So for this week's video, I decided I wanted to try an art supply that I bought, I think about a year ago and haven't used yet. And I feel like it's time. So these are the Viviva color sheets. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. These are a dried watercolor that you can reactivate which makes them really cool and super portable. And from all of the reviews that I've seen, the colors are super vibrant and they blend really well. So I'm very hopeful. There are a couple different sets right now that you can get, but this is just the original set. I think all of the sets have 16 colors in them though, but this is, yeah, this is the original. I'm really excited to paint something with these, but before we do that, I feel like we should probably swatch the colors first and just see what we're working with. Don't judge my paint water, I've been crafting recently. <laughs> so the first color we have is crimson, which is, you know, just your standard basic red. And then deep pink, which also kind of just looks red. And then vermilion, which is a super bright orange. Dusk orange, which is a little bit more of a muted, almost rusty orange. And then chrome yellow, which looks a little um, crunchy, but very bright. I like that one. This is actually drying a little bit pink. What is that? How? I did, oh no. And then gold ochre. Ooh, that, is that because of the water or is that the color? I'm gonna re-swatch that one because I think I might have goofed. We'll disregard this swatch right here. Next is burnt umber. This one is interesting to me because it's got these little spots. Kind of looks like that orange. And then burnt sienna, which looks pretty similar to burnt umber, if I'm being honest. Next, we're moving into the greens, which is light green and sap green. These are the ones. These are the ones that I was waiting to get to. So Viridian first. If that is not the prettiest green that you have ever seen. It's so hard to show. There we go. That's better. I mean, you can kind of see the green undertones underneath, but it's not reflective at all, which is interesting. And then Peacock Blue. Okay, these are my new favorite watercolors. These colors are awesome. I wish they would do a set of just colors like this and like not tell you the names and you had to guess what color you think they are. That would be cool. There's two more of those. I just realized that. Wow, okay. So this one is supposed to be blue and this one is purple, but they're very clearly brown on the paper. Next we have Persian Blue. I just, these are so pretty. I don't think I've ever had a blue watercolor that looks this nice. Oh, 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 hang on. <laughs> you can see it a tiny bit on the green, but like hardly at all. See the corner, you can kind of see a little bit of red, but look at this guy. It's turning purple on the paper. And then we have Violet. Now I'm interested to see what this guy is gonna do. Whoa, because it says magenta, but I'm also mad at this guy because clearly this is what has done this to me, so. That is a really pretty color. I'm still mad at him, but he's a really pretty color. And then last we have Slate Black. Ooh, it's like a purpley black. So you can't really see it that well on camera, but it's starting to get a little bit of the green cast back on that one. But this one is becoming more reflective as it dries, which is interesting because this one I feel like didn't do that and neither did these two. I kind of want to paint a bigger swatch of those just to see if it happens, if I do it correctly. <laughs> So I feel like maybe I didn't and that's why it's not working. I don't know. I'm just gonna do like a, a thicker coating of it and see, ugh, something's peeling up. That's gross. So I did a little bit of a thicker coat on that one. And then we'll also do these two again. Same deal, thicker coat. Then I'm just gonna do a little bit more of the Persian blue and the violet. Okay. Um. Maybe that wasn't the best coating of that. That might be a bit better. 
Just trying to give it a little bit of a chance to dry before I judge them, but it looks like there's a little bit of a red tint on the edges of the green paint. Um, you can kind of, yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it. As for these two, I don't really see any change yet. Maybe in this one a tiny bit, but not so much. But all in all, I think this is a really cool watercolor set. Even if these three don't do everything that this one is doing right now, that's okay. Now that we've swatched them, I think the next logical step would be to paint something. And then in an effort not to waste any of my watercolor paper, I decided to do a quick sketch on my tablet just so that I can kind of get an idea of what I want beforehand. And pretty much what I was going for is just a little Krampus type guy in an ugly Christmas sweater. He's unsure how he feels about the holidays and aren't we all, so. That's the vibe, that's what we're going with today. So now that the quick sketch is done, I'm just gonna sketch in what I had onto my watercolor paper with my blue pencil, which is actually water soluble. And I prefer that to my regular pencils because this way I won't get any graphite on my painting. And I'm just gonna start blocking in all of the big areas of color. His main color is gonna be crimson. And then I'll just go in and add some shading and some highlights with the other colors that are similar. I definitely want to use the peacock blue in this because it's my favorite color out of the entire paint palette. I think I'm going to use it for his horns and probably his hooves. And then for his sweater, because I have so many yellows and oranges, I think it would be good to try to use all of them and just make it look, I don't know, almost textured with all of the different shades. And that might make it look also a little bit old and gross, which is kind of funny. And then for his face details, I'm just gonna layer the color over itself multiple times just to give it a little bit more depth and give him kind of a nose made out of a paint blob, if that makes any sense. And then hopefully I've layered enough of the paint so that I can get the metallic effect out of the peacock blue on the hooves and the horns. For his hair, I'm just using the slate black and I'm roughly sketching it in. And then I'm going back in with the tiny brush and just adding some little hair strokes and also kind of a almost a telephone cord sort of outline. I don't know, I just think those look really cool. And then I'm just giving him some eyelids with the darker red. And then I did use the vermilion for his eyes. I'm just not sure if it's a thick enough layer for them to be metallic or not. So I guess we'll just find out. Kind of, you can kind of see it. And then I'm just going in with the first yellow onto the sweater. I think this color is the only color that I've had any issues with, with um, pilling. Cause that's not the paper that's pilling up, that's the paint. I'm surprised that it's the gold ochre that's doing it because the chrome yellow is the one that looks super textured on the paper. And then I'm just gonna layer the paint over itself a bunch to give it a sweatery texture. I'm just gonna use the burnt umber kind of as an outline and then give it some little hairs on the sweater to make it look kind of like um, one of those itchy grandma sweaters. Maybe his grandma made him this, I don't know. I can't think about that too much because the longer I think about it, the more I want to draw his grandma. And that's, that's a project for another day. <laughs> I'm just adding some stitching on the collar of the sweater. And then I'm just gonna use the only two greens I have <laughs> to paint the tree. And then just using the burnt umber again to do the tree trunk. And then I'm just taking the sap green and outlining the tree a little bit. And I know that this is not a watercolor, but I really like the control that you have with the Posca pens. So I'm just gonna use the red one to do some ornaments on the tree and also some writing on the sweater because I don't wanna run the risk of having the red watercolor reactivate any of these other colors and having it look a mess. So forgive me, but I'm using the Posca pen. And here's our grumpy little Krampus. And his horns actually are metallic, so I'm really happy with that. All in all, I'd say he turned out pretty good. Which brings us to the end of this video. You may be wondering why I'm waving Lars around. You also may be wondering who Lars is. If you don't know, here's a link to the video where I made him. But I actually made something that I'm really excited about. I made some embroidered patches of Lars and also some stickers. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one with an actual tutorial one. Is she crazy? Maybe. But I'll see you then. <laughs>